Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 10 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In today's episode, we are going to learn about the version history of Angular and we will try and compare each versions and the evolution of Angular over a period of time. We know that Angular is currently in Angular version 10, but what are the changes that it has undergone in the previous versions we'll explore in this particular episode. From a day-to-day -day implementation perspective, you may not use this particular uh, theoretical knowledge in your everyday basis, but especially this is helpful for your understanding because if you are trying to apply for a new front-end engineering role, they are bound to ask you questions which are related to this. Also, if you are working on some kind of a legacy application which was written either in Angular 4, 6, 8 and you are asked to upgrade it or rather you are working on some kind of an upgrade kind of a project, this information and knowledge will surely help you. Having said that, let's get started. This is a part 2 of Angular 10 full tutorial series where today we learn about the version history. Alright, so like I said, this is a complete playlist. I've planned around 100 tutorials um, that um, that I've planned for you on this particular series includes live hands-on application and project development. The playlist link and the notes and the code uh, for the GitHub link, I will update it in the description box as we move along in the series. So stay tuned for that. Keep checking the description because that's where I will be uploading all the links. Also, if you have any doubts during the course of this tutorial series, uh, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer and help you. Alright, so so far um, we have seen about some of the frequently asked questions. Uh, that was episode 0, I call it. And in the first episode we talked about the introduction and the basic uh, details about Angular. Today we'll talk about complete version history of Angular and understand the evolution of it. Alright, so this is a quick note for our viewers who are joining us new on this particular episode. So Angular is a front-end framework that makes it easy to build applications for both mobile and web. Angular is an open source project sponsored and primarily maintained by Google. Angular is a modern framework which is entirely written in TypeScript. So Angular not only supports TypeScript but all the code that we will write going forward will be in TypeScript which is a superset of JavaScript so whatever you can do with JavaScript you can do it in TypeScript and much much more all right so now let's start about individual versions right so angular 1.x right so angular 1 as we know right um, it, it it used to be referred to as angular JS and not angular right so clearly uh, if someone asks you what is the difference between angular and angular JS it means that they're talking about angular 1.x and 2 or above right so anything which is angular 1.x is referred as angular js anything 2 or above is just referred as angular all right so angular 1.x uh, is a javascript based open source front end web application framework but the kind of uh, architecture and the way it was implemented right it was written as a mvc right or rather i would say mvvm which is model view view model uh, this kind of architecture was very difficult in terms of how developers used to write uh, we used to write services factories and all those um, so we almost forgot it now it's almost close to 10 years um, so it was released in october 2010 i don't think anybody writes anymore in j angular js uh, it's deprecated it is in now in long term support mode I don't think it's even supported anymore. There is no active development going on, right? So the interesting thing is Angular 2 came in, right? Which is nothing but it's a complete rewrite, right? So they reimagined the entire architecture in Angular 2. And the way they reimagined was in components, in modular structure, right? Angular 1 was not. So Angular 2 is a complete rewrite of Angular JS which is totally in TypeScript and not in JavaScript. Angular 1 was not built for mobile, right? Whereas Angular 2 is mobile first kind of a framework. It was initially released in the September 2016. So that's where um, somewhere 2016. So it's almost now close to four years. 
and then uh, it provides more ch uh, choices for languages right so for example if you want to uh, work with ES6 or ES5 TypeScript or Dart you can write Angular 2 code with that right so the next version was skipped and the reason being that uh, there was a mismatch between the router and the angular core and compiler libraries right so router was ahead then the core and the compiler so that's where uh, they skipped angular 3 and the next uh, release that was uh, given was angular 4 right so angular 4 was released sometime in march 2017 so now if you see this pattern right uh, you would see that a, ma a major version is coming out in every six months right so if you see there would be one sometime around october september october timeline and one would be somewhere around february march right so those are the things that um, would be uh, that's how the most of the releases are done now angular 4 release is backward compatible which means that you know uh, it has two it will support two and also has a lot of additional new things uh, there was no major change uh, in angular 4 from 2 uh, but there are some changes which we need to highlight where um, some um, modules were deprecated some were added uh, some were moved around here and there again these are very very specific to each um, you know uh, versions but some of the highlights are that you know ng if else was added uh, there was email validations that were added and there was animation that was also added along with it right so those are some of the high level things on angular 4 now came the next angular 5 which is again released in november 2017 now these are some of the changes uh, that happened was the build optimizer was introduced which means the builds were taking very heavy time right the application was becoming bulky uh, it was becoming hard and it was taking performance toll and that's where the build optimizer was introduced which helped us in kind of having production builds using AOT and all that uh, then angular universal state transfer API and DOM support was introduced in uh, 5 uh, there was internationalization of numbers state currency pipes and if you see one major striking feature of angular 5 would I would say that you know uh, angular HTTP was deprecated and HTTP client was introduced right so if you see um, if uh, so this is very important thing if you're working on a project which was built on angular 4 right so if you are working on some project which is on angular 4 and if your management has decided to upgrade it to 10 or 8 or 9 or 6 so this is one thing that you need to really be careful because angular slash http will not work you need to now start using http client module and http client so that's an important thing that you have to make sure that it is has to be used just like how HTTP client was replaced uh, HTTP module was also replaced which means that you need to start using HTTP client module instead of HTTP module right so these are all generic ones so if you see in your TypeScript uh, if you open Visual Studio code it will tell you some of the deprecated ones um, but that's that's about the starter things that you need to work with uh, major changes also uh, angular 5 had some of the major changes for a uh, component lifecycle right and new router lifecycle events uh, for example guards check start child activation start activation start etc so these were newly introduced uh, router lifecycle events all right so that was about angular 5 then came angular 6 now there are some noted changes which is uh, two major commands were introduced in angular 6 right so ng update and ng add so these two will really make the transition and the upgrading of angular apps easy and smooth right along with that they introduce cdk which is component dev kit uh, very cool uh, stuff and new uh, elements were introduced uh, there was much better starter components and support for angular material 6 right uh, there were better schematics that were introduced and tree shakeable providers which means that again the builds were optimized and better animations and support for rx js version 6 so if you see all of the angular router value changes are using observables so it's heavily dependent on rx js 
so that was something that was made compatible with it then came angular 7 now angular 7 was released on october 2018 right um, around the same line uh, angular material 7 was also released right so which means three different projects were released on the same timeline angular 7 angular cli 7 and angular material 7 some of the important changes if in angular 7 were virtual scholar now that's a very very important uh, if you are building a consumer internet application virtual scroll scrolling is something that is very very in demand uh, one of the most asked feature on github is also drag and drop support uh, so that was introduced in angular 7 then was uh, typescript support for 3.1 and rxjs was updated to 6.3 right um, so if you see there were new angular cli prompts that were added like ng new add it would give us prompt that you can select different options like routing scss support etc then came angular 8 uh, which was released sometime around may 2019 um, which is again a minor uh, the change and not major here again so here important thing is there was differential loading by default right which means that it will automatically choose the browser right based on the browser it will behave differently on its own so this is really helpful because uh, there was a struggle to support angular applications between modern browsers and legacy browsers so with differential loading by default it makes it really really easy uh, that it automatically switches between different browsers on its own right and then there are builder apis in cli which is an exciting feature right uh, because you can start building your own commands and we can customize them basically uh, there was web worker support workspace apis and angular cli 8.3 was introduced right and if you see angular cli 8.3 ng deploy is also uh, supported which means not only ng build now you can deploy it right from the cli so that's another striking feature of angular 8 all right so angular 9 uh, which was released sometime in around february 2020 um, so it is the synchronized major release um, with angular cli and angular uh, material 9 right uh, which means uh, some of the changes from angular 8 where uh, if you see the iv compiler so that's something that has come in new in angular 9 uh, which is resulting in faster testing better debugging improved css classes style binding international so these are all improvements again this is a minor release it's not a major one uh, there were new angular material components that were supported like youtube player google maps etc so if you see angular 9 onwards uh, sorry angular 8 onwards all the aot builds are by default right uh, so you don't have to mention any more prod uh, it's by default now all the prod builds are AOT enabled last but not the least um, so now then came the angular 10 uh, which is the latest uh, major version released in June 2020 uh, so this is a smaller release uh, compared to other uh, major releases because of just four month time um, so it is a synchronized major release with angular CLI 10 and angular material 10 right so nothing major or fancy change from angular 9 here except that there are new uh, features and components like a date range picker there is warnings about common js imports uh, it has stricter settings and it has ts lib support ts lint support and there is a new browser configuration altogether right so those are the additional things again the builds have gone smaller the performance has improved other than that there are not much, much changes from angular 9 to angular 10 all right so that's that's all uh, i think the end to end comparison i've tried and put all the uh, notes for you uh, again these are all theoretical things which you may not use it on a day to day basis but you should be aware of all of these changes uh, especially if you are preparing for an angular role or an interview this is something that you should be going through just to make yourself aware and be confident in answering those questions in the next episode we'll talk about how to upgrade your existing applications to angular 10 and then we will start our journey of writing angular 10 application from scratch installing learning each and every feature and 
lot lot of fun having uh, with services component modules and much much more so stay tuned uh, i like i always say please if you have any doubts drop them in the comment section i'll be happy to answer them i'll see you in the next episode we will talk about how to upgrade to angular 10 thank you so much see you in the next episode